Good afternoon, and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. Tonight's lesson will be a rebroadcast of Identifying the Enemy and How He Attacks in Our Lives from the Spiritual Boot Camp series. Please enjoy. Praise the Lord. We give honor to the true and living God. What a great day it is. And we truly bless the name of the Lord on this Wednesday night. Truly, the Lord is good and greatly to be praised. We're excited to be back in your presence again as we get back into our Wednesday night Bible study. We're excited over who the Lord is, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and He's our Savior. Amen. And we truly give His name on and praise on this Wednesday evening. I pray and trust that you've been um, um, growing with us and walking with us on these Wednesdays. Amen. Just don't become a Sunday church only. Take time out to get into your Wednesday night Bible study because this is where we're stimulated to growth. This is where we're conforming to the image of Christ. And this is where we learn how to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. We're in some challenging times. Amen. But we need to understand as believers, those who have given their life to Jesus Christ, that we have the victory because Jesus has already given it to us. So we truly thank the Lord. We want to begin tonight. Wednesday night um, um, prayer and Bible study for June the 24th. We missed last week. We had a church meeting. We want to pick up where we left off last um, time that we met. We're in a great study, a great study for this season that we're in, um, a great study for the believer, um, something that we all need to know and to be engaged in, and that is the spiritual boot camp. We need to learn how to do war spiritually. Uh, we need to know how to fight the good fight. We need to understand um, the schemes of the enemy. We, under, we need to understand how to put on the whole armor of God. That's what we need to be as believers in this season. Uh, we need to understand what does the Bible, what does the scriptures tell us about spiritual warfare because truly we are engaged in a mighty spiritual warfare. One of the, one of the um, things of the church, church ministry, is that we are to be warned about some of the spiritual warfare that we are currently engaged in, amen. Anytime uh, uh, God is blessing um, believers, anytime God is blessing the church, anytime God is blessing um, 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 the kingdom of God and he's moving the kingdom of God and souls are being saved and our families are being restored and, and, and eyes are being opened, amen, and lives are being changed, you can best believe that the enemy is hot on the trail. You can best believe that he's waging a true war against our families, uh, against our church, and in our nation. So we need to understand that we're truly in a warfare, amen. We're in a warfare, and the church, uh, the church needs to understand how to cut through the darkness, how to cut through wickedness, and that is when we learn how to put on our our spiritual clothes, our, our, our war clothes, amen, as, as I should say, how to put our war clothes on. Our study text is out of the book of Ephesians. The Apostle Paul gives us a great treatise in the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 18. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn it there and and you can look and go along with me. But in the book of Ephesians is the warfare. We, we said that in this book, he's dealing with the church. The book of Ephesians is the doctrine for the New Testament church. Amen. And in the last portion of the book of Ephesians, he tells us one thing. He says to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand. Amen. And that we may be able to fight this fight, this spiritual warfare. And so that's what we've been talking about. Um, that's what we, um, um, when we left off. We was talking about this whole thing about um, fighting a good fight and understanding this warfare. Amen. One thing I want to say before we get started, God has never instituted Christians. Walk with me this evening. He's never instituted Christians to focus on the devil. And I don't want you to think that in this teaching, our main goal is just to focus on the devil. That's not the main goal. The main goal of Ephesians 6 chapter is not for us just to focus on the devil. Amen. But it's for us not to be ignorant of his devices. And it's for us to learn how to dawn, to fit properly uh, the spiritual clothing that God has for all believers. Amen. So that we can continue to advance the kingdom of God on the earth. That's the mission of the church. The mission of the church is to advance the kingdom of God on the earth. Amen. Well, let's open up with a short word of prayer and let's get started in our Bible study. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, we come first to give your name, honor, praise, and glory, and thanks. 
We thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our, our king. We thank you for being our savior. We thank you for the forgiveness of sin. You have cleansed us from all unrighteousness and you have clothed us, oh God, in the righteousness of your son, Jesus Christ, that we have now been declared righteous, the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that we're not what we used to be, Lord God, and we have been, we have been transformed into brand new creations, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for how you've blessed us all week long and how you protected us and how you provided for us. Now we pray that you illuminate our hearts and minds and give us, give us a, a rhema word that will, that will encourage us and build us up for the battle. We give your name honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We want to get back to putting on the war clothes, the spiritual armor that God has told us to put on. We had a review and Last time that we talked, those who were with us last time, we talked about the enemy. And, and just a quick review this evening, we want to talk about um, um, the enemy, amen? And we said that the enemy last week is, our enemy is a formidable foe. He's a formidable foe, amen? And what we said last time is that you, you can't see him. Um, um, you can't touch him. Um, you can't watch this. You can't outwit him. You can't. You're not stronger than him. Amen. And, and, and we said that he is a liar. Jesus says this. We're going to see in a minute. He's a murderer. Amen. From the very beginning. And we need to understand that this that this enemy that we fight, he is the devil. Amen. He is he is Diabolos. Amen. He is the ancient serpent. Amen. He is the prince of this world. Amen. He is the little G-O-D of this world. Amen. He's the adversary. Just giving you some different um, 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 terminologies or, or, or terms of who he is. Is. He is he is the great dragon, according to John in the book of um, Revelations. He's the great dragon. He is the accuser of the brethren. That's who we wage war. We don't wage war with each other. We don't wage war with flesh and blood, according to Ephesians. We don't wage war with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Amen. And and the enemy, brothers and sisters, is real. The warfare is real. One thing about being a Christian, you cannot be a conscientious objector in this thing. If you are a born again believer, you're in the war. If you don't, if you even if you don't want to be in the war, you're in the war. Amen. If you have called on the name of Jesus Christ, you are now, watch this, an enemy of Satan. Amen. And so we have to understand that this is a war going on. Amen. And the, and the enemy is real. And he is over a highly organized, I call it a spiritual mafia. He's over a spiritual mafia. He's over a whole crew um, called demons, unclean spirits. Amen. Uh, the Bible tells us in Revelation, he took one third of the angels uh, out of heaven. Amen. And so we have, um, the battle is not only with Satan, because Satan can only be at one place at one time. He's, he's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. Amen. He's not omnipotent. Only God is those things. God has those godly attributes. So Satan can only be in one place at one time. But he has a host of demonic host of demons, unclean spirits, and they have been commissioned, they have been charged, amen, to bring war to you and I, to bring war to our church, bring you war in our nation, bring war in our churches and in our families, amen? And so we have to understand who we are fighting against, amen? This is what the Bible says. Jesus describes the devil. Jesus, uh, the son of God, God in the flesh, he describes the devil, amen? And the devil is not someone walking around with no red jumpsuit on and no pitchfork, amen. Uh, he, he, he's, he's, the Bible says he reflects himself as an angel of light, amen. He reflects himself as an angel of light, and Jesus describes him. He says, you belong to your father in the text of John 8, 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. Look what he says about uh, then with the Pharisees. He calls them, he says that their father is the devil, amen. And he said he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to truth. Get the attributes. He doesn't hold no truth. Amen. Uh, for there is no truth in him. And he lies. He is the very originator of lies. Matter of fact, sin is originated in a fallen angel. 
Amen. He speaks his native tongues. He is a liar and the father of lies. Look what Jesus says about this real enemy. Amen. He's real saints and we need to open up our eyes. We need to get our heads out of the sand. We need to understand that we're in a spiritual battle. We need to understand that we need to ask God for spiritual discernment and we need to learn how to test the spirits and, and try the spirits. Everything is not of God. Amen. Some of the things that we encounter come straight from the pit. Amen. And we need to recognize that. Amen. So as we look at this, we talked about the enemy last time when we talked about some of his attributes. Go back. You can go back on YouTube and pull up the last teaching and you can pick that up and learn about that. Um, we don't want to spend a lot of time in that, but we want to go into our teaching today because we're going to learn um, how to put the how to don the, the entire armor and how to put it on the right way. But before we learn how to put the armor on the right way, because I hear a lot of teaching about the spiritual armor. And we're going to learn some great biblical truth about the spiritual armor. But first, we've got to understand how the enemy works. We've got to understand how the devil works and how he has been attacking our lives. Amen. And have been, um, and we've been falling prey to some of his schemes. So the first thing we want to look at where we left off, let's talk about this whole issue here of, of the Christian's conflict. We want to understand the Christian's conflict and we want to look at it in three dimensions. We want to look at the Christian's um, conflict in three dimensions. And I want you to write this down somewhere. This is Bible study. You're at home. Get you a piece of paper and, and a pen and, and write down some notes. Amen. Just don't listen to me. Sit back. Listen to me. Write down some notes. Amen. Understand that we are in a conflict. And let me give you three dimensions to the conflict. There are uh, the Bible, the Bible, the word of God discusses um, the Christian's conflict in three dimensions. Listen to what Pastor Webster is saying. The Bible, the word of God mentions the Christian's conflict in three dimensions. Amen. In three dimensions. In the first dimension, the conflict he mentions here is, is the conflict between the flesh and the spirit. The conflict between the flesh and the spirit. There is a war, watch this, that wages within us. Amen. Between every believer, there is a war that wages within each one of us who are born again. Watch this. If you have never touched the hem of his garment, if you've never called on the name of Jesus, if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, watch this. You're not in no battle. You're not in no war. Amen. You're, you're the natural man. And so by you being a natural man, you're not in a war. But the moment you give your life to Christ, there's a war that wages within us. And it's a war between the flesh and the spirit. And we need to understand that. Amen. It says in Galatians, it says in Galatians 5, 16 and 18. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not listen to the words and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Now listen to the apostle Paul as he explains this warfare, this conflict, because the flesh, the flesh um, it, it is not redeemed. The flesh is not born again. The flesh is still corruptible. Amen. Now, that don't mean that the flesh has no value. It doesn't mean that we can't still glorify God in the flesh. We can, but you can only glorify him when the flesh is being led by the spirit. Amen. That's the only way we can glorify him in the flesh is when the flesh is now being, being now fall under the power, falls under the, the control of the spirit. Amen. And so we have to understand that the flesh is not redeemed. Amen. The flesh is not uh, born again. The flesh is still corruptible, but the spirit is redeemed. This new spirit that God, the new Matikas, the new man that God has in us um, is born again. And so this spirit now is, is incorruptible. Amen. That's why you can't lose your salvation. Because the spirit that has now is a partaker of the divine nature is an incorruptible spirit. It's a partaker of the divine nature. It's been regenerated. It's been made brand new. Amen. And so this spirit is is the spirit that God now used to, to lead us in righteousness and holiness. And the spirit has been redeemed. So as he says this, he says, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. Listen to the word of God. Amen. Our flesh, our, our, our flesh, um, the, 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 uh, 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 the old man, as, as Paul says in Romans 6 chapter, it's the flesh, it's not me, the old man, which is the flesh, amen, that old Adamic nature he talks about, he says here, is contrary to the spirit. And they're in conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want, but if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Did you hear that? 
And so as we look at this, we need to understand that there is a, a war, the conflict uh, of, of this nature, amen? The flesh wants what it wants, amen? The spirit is contrary to the sinful nature, and they're in conflict with each other. That's the battle that you and I fight every day. That's why every day, watch this, that's why every day we want to walk in the spirit. That's why every day you want to, you want to, you want to open up with prayer and the word of God and, and you want the spirit to control you, amen? You want, to, you want to be drunk with the spirit of God, amen? And so we want the spirit and the means to control us, amen? To take over our lives, amen? But then secondly, there's another conflict for the believer. The first conflict is with the flesh and it's with the spirit, amen? And we have, we have victory over that because we have the blood of Jesus Christ. But then secondly, there's another conflict. And that conflict is between the Christian and the world. That's the second one. And the Bible mentions that. Uh, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Well, let me remind you, because it seems like sometimes we get disrupted with this. We don't understand this. This is not our home. Let me say that again. If you're born again, we, we have a, a home in glory. We're just passing through. We're sojourning. Amen. And in the meantime, we're going to occupy and do the work that God has called us to do until he calls us home to be with him. Amen. And so we have to understand that there's a conflict between the Christian and the world. Amen. We got to understand that. And one thing we got to understand, the world does not love you. The world is not in love with you. And the world is, is the godless society, the, the cosmos, the, the thing that is ran by Satan and his deem is the system. That's what he's dealing with. The system of this world, the corrupt system of this world. It does not love the Christian. It doesn't love Jesus. Amen. And so we have to understand that. You want to know why some people treat you the way they treat you and don't want to um, be around you and, and stuff like that. Watch this. Don't get, don't get upset with yourself. Don't get mad at yourself, but realize that there's a conflict going on there's a conflict going on there's a war between between the christian and the world look what jesus says here he says if the world if the world hates you listen up rooted bible if the world hates you keep in mind that it hated me first if you belong to the world if you belong to the system Amen. If you belong to this, to this fallen, and as John also says, to this evil, corrupt world, amen. If you belong to this world, it will love you as its own. Listen to the word of God. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Now, right there, you should be praising God for the fact that you've been chosen. You should praise God right now that he has snatched you out of the world. And watch this. What he means is that he's placed you in his family. He's, he spiritually baptized you, took you out of Satan's family, and placed you in his family. Amen. And you're no longer of this world. Amen. And so as we see this, he's chosen you out of the world. That is why, that is why the world hates you. And watch this, believe. You need to wake up. You need to understand that the world is not your friend. The world don't love you when you stand for righteousness and what's, what's truthful and what would bring glory and honor to God. The world don't love that. The world, the world don't love that at all because the world wants what it wants. Amen. And so as we understand this, there's a conflict. Secondly, there's a conflict between, between, between the Christian and the world. Did you see that? And it says that the world, watch this, in the text, it says that the world hates you. That's what it says. That's what the word of God say. Don't try to twist it. Don't try to bend it. Amen. It says that the world hates you. Let's take it for what it says. Amen. But then thirdly, and this is where we're going to pick up in our teaching dealing with the spiritual warfare. Amen. Thirdly, as we see this, the last um, um, conflict that the Bible describes. Amen. We saw the first one, the flesh and the spirit. We wage in war every day. You and I are in that battle every day, but we got the victory. Secondly, between the Christian, the believer, and the world. Amen? But then thirdly, the conflict between the Christian and demons. Amen? The Christian and demons. Amen? The last conflict, understand this, cannot be separated from the other two. You can't separate this last conflict from the other two conflicts that I've already mentioned. They go hand in hand. Amen? From the other two conflicts, because it is through the other two conflicts that the devil uses to oppose us. Watch this. The devil uses the, the flesh, conflict with the flesh and the spirit. He uses that. 
because he tempts us in our flesh, but then he also uses the conflict with the world because many Christians fall prey to the world. We fall under the world's philosophy and how the world thinks, and the enemy uses that to render us inoperative, amen? To make, to, to make us non-salty, amen? To make us no longer be light of the world because we look like the world, amen? And so he'll use these other two conflicts, him and his host, to, to, to oppose us. I want you to walk with me today because we're in a battle, but we got the victory. Understand who you are. And so as we look at this, he says this, watch this, the conflict between the Christian and the demons. Put on a full arm of God. So that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Watch the word of God. All right? So you can take your stand. He ain't say, he ain't say nothing about no, no running. He ain't say nothing about no hiding. He said you're going to take your stand. You're going to stand. All right? That's what he says to the believer. For our struggle, it is a struggle. It's a battle. It's a struggle. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But against rulers. Here we go with the hierarchy of function even in a, a demonic world. Amen. With rulers, against authorities, against powers. Amen. Of this dark world. Listen to that, Christian. Of this dark world. And against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So watch this. We see now the warfare that's raging. Amen. Sometimes you can't, you can't, you watch this. You, you said, well, I can't see it with the visible eye. But you may not at times be able to see it with the visible eye. But you can feel the effects of it. In the physical world, amen? Whatever's going on in the spiritual world shows up in the physical world, amen? And we see it right now. We see all the conflict in the world right now. We see so much going on right now. And a lot of the stuff is being incited by the enemy, amen? So we have to understand this. We got to understand warfare. We got to have spiritual discernment as a child of God, amen? So as we look at this, we want to learn something today. This is all we're going to learn today. Because when we come back next week, we're going to start learning how to put the armor on right. Amen. Some folks don't even know how to put their arm on right. Stuff all out of place and we're going to learn how to put it on right. Amen. But first, we got to understand one thing. And we want to understand this. We want to understand the wiles of the devil. What are the schemes? A.K.A. I like the, the King James. NIV calls them schemes. King James calls them the wiles. Amen. And that's what we're going to learn. We want to understand this. Amen. I, I personally believe, this is what I personally believe. I believe that many, if not most believers, are not aware of the different schemes. I think a lot of folks are saved in church, love singing songs, and, and even some preachers love preaching good messages. But a lot of us are uh, uh, oblivious to the schemes and the wild. Amen. And you learn the schemes and the wiles. Watch this. You learn the schemes and the wiles when you get in that word. If you ain't in the word, if you ain't spending time in prayer, if you ain't on your knees, if you ain't calling on the name of the Lord, if you ain't investigating scriptures, you're going to get your head smacked every time because you're going to fall prey to the wiles and the schemes of the devil. Amen. You're not that strong. You're not that smart. You're not that gifted. Only way you can know the schemes and the wiles, God has to reveal it to you by way of his word. That's how you get discernment. That's how you get maturity as a believer. Amen. So I do believe that a lot of believers, they don't know the different traps that's been set in the schemes of the devil in his imps, his boys. Amen. That's all around us. Amen. They have an operation against us. So what we're going to do is learn about the schemes because that's what he says in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. He says in Ephesians 6, 11, he says this. He says, don't be ignorant. He says, so, so we can stand against the schemes. King James says, so we can uh, uh, not be ignorant or stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. What does that mean? What is that? We've been hearing that all in our Christian walk. What is the wiles? What is the schemes? But let me give you a, the definition in the Greek. Let's do a little bit of Greek work. Let's do a little bit of Greek work. Let's define it. In the Greek, in the Greek, the wiles, uh, methodeia, amen? And it means methods. That's all it means. It means that the enemy has different methods that he uses, different, different schemes, methods used against us that he, to render us inoperative. Amen. Can't take your soul, can't take your salvation, but he can render you where you have no, no significance, that your salt is no longer salty, that your testimony is gone. Amen. You have make no impact. Amen. When you show up, you just show up, but you don't make no impact. Amen. That's his job. Amen. To render us inoperative, to cause us to stumble. 
Amen. The enemy wants each one of us to stumble. He wants each one of us to fall into sin. And eventually, this is what he wants. He wants us to walk away from the faith. He wants us to walk away from the faith. He wants us to get so in, in, engrossed in sin and, and disobedience and, and stumble that we just walk away from the faith. That's the scheme. That's the trick of the enemy that we no longer have an impact. Amen. And he's working against all of us. Not only is he working against Pastor Webb, but he's working against you. He's working. If you're a believer, he's working against you. He's trying to destroy your family. He's trying to destroy your marriage. Amen. Wake up. He's trying to rob you of your, your grandchildren. He's trying to bring curses upon your grandchildren. Amen. He's trying to do anything he t can to counteract the blessings of God. And so we need to understand the wiles of the devil and the schemes. And we need to understand that this is real. He wants you to leave this earth where you don't finish the race. That you don't do everything that God has gifted you and called you to do. Amen. Amen. That you become a byword instead of making an impact. And so as you look at this, let's identify very quickly. Let's identify six major methods of the enemy. Enemy has six major methods methods of the wiles. Amen. I want you to get this down in your spirit. I want you to understand this. Amen. I want you to understand this. If you're a preacher, you need to wake up because you need to understand it because you definitely after you. You're a deacon. He wants to rip your head off because if you take down leadership, then he knows he can, he can impact the whole church. Amen. And so watch this. What are the six major methods or wiles used by the devil? Amen. And I just want to encourage you as we look at this and understand some things. Um, the first one is this, is that the major, the, 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 one of the first things a while is used to do is used to create a system, a system. Wait, before I go, let me, let me go back. Let me get, I'm moving a little bit fast. Let me go back. I want you first to understand what the Apostle Paul says before we even get started, before I give you the wiles. Apostle Paul warned saved folks. This is what Apostle Paul, he warned all of us who were born again on our way to heaven. He warned us, and he says in 2 Corinthians 2.11, he says this, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his scheme. That's what Paul says. He says, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. All right, so he warns us. All right, he warns us. It shows us that we're in a battle, we're in a fight. Amen. I don't care if you not, I don't care if you just show up on church and you don't do nothing. I don't care if you say, well, I don't do no ministry. I don't do nothing. No, he's still out to knock your block out. Amen. And he's still out to take your life. Amen. Only by the grace of God. Amen. So watch this. The first while, the first while used is Satan, he wants to create a system. Watch this. That is diametrically opposed to God's kingdom. That's what he wants. Watch this. He, he, he creates a system for you and I to fall into this system that is diametrically opposed to God's kingdom. And what I mean by that is that he wants you and I to fall prey to the world's ideology. He wants you to be like the world. He wants you to fall prey to the ideas and the principles and the actions of this world. That's what he wants. Amen. He wants us, he wants us to fall prey to the philosophies of this world. Anything that we are involved in, anything that, that, that we do or anything that, uh, that leaves God out of it. He wants you and I to do things in, in our lives that leave God out of the picture. It could be on your job. It could be your education. Whatever it is, he wants us to fall prey to, to his system and not... And, and that is diametrically opposed to God's kingdom. Watch what the scripture says. In 1 John 2.15, it says this. It says, do not love this world. Listen up, saint. Don't love this world. Amen. It's not, you can enjoy the, the great things that God has in this world. God created this world for you to enjoy it the right way as a believer. Believers should know how to enjoy this world the right way. But he says, don't love this world. Don't be so infatuated with this world. Amen nor the things that this world has to offer you. Amen? For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Look what he says. He says, if you love this world so much, then that's what, there's no relationship with you, with God the Father. Because watch this, you are so in love with this world, there can't be no relationship with God the Father. Look, watch the word of God. This is a truthful word here. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure. I like the NLT in this. 
translation. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure. Amen. And a craving for everything we see. And the pride and our achievements and possession. These are not from the, from the Father, but from this world. And he says this, he says, don't love this world. Don't love the things of this world, amen? Because this world is something, I, I wrote down something here. I wanted, to, I wanted to emphasize this a little bit more. Um, he, he talks about this world, and this world, he's talking about, he's talking about the lust, as we're going to see, the, the lust of the eyes. Uh, uh, he talks about the pride of life. He talks about, he ain't talking about stuff. He's talking about the cravings of this world. He's talking about, he's not talking about the, he's talking about unnatural stuff. He's talking about sinful stuff. He's talking about stuff that's not normal. He's talking about stuff that goes beyond God's will, amen? That we want this world so much. We want what, what's in our imagination. We want, we want everything that this world has to offer us, amen? And even down to the pride of life because now we're about self-centeredness. It's about what I want. What I desire. Amen. And so he says here, he says that the enemy's job is to get us to operate under this world system. And as believers, we got to ask ourselves, am I operating under God's system, the kingdom of God's system and doing the things that please him and honor him and serve him? Or am I operating under this, this system, the world system that is diametrically opposed to God? We got to ask ourselves these questions, amen? And we see here, you know, uh, what, what am I mapping out in my future, in my, uh, my career, my finances, my, my business ventures? Does it have the Lord in the middle of it? Or if it's just me, the pride of life and uh, uh, the, the lust of my eyes and the lust of my flesh, what I want, the pleasing of what, the cravings that I have for myself, amen? And so as we look at this, one of the wiles of the enemy is to get us to operate a, a opposite of what God has for us. And as believers, that's a constant battle for the believer, amen? Because uh, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. What does it gain a man to profit the whole world and lose his soul, amen? What does it gain us to get everything this world have to offer us, but then we never surrender to Christ, amen? It gives us nothing. And so we see the first while is to get us to operate under this scheme, amen? Get us to operate under this scheme. That's the first while. That's the first while. The second while. The second method is to make the values of this godless society, that should be godless society, to make the values of this godless society seem attractive. He wants us to make everything that we see is attractive, that this world is more attractive to us than eternity. That this world is more, what this world has to offer us is more attractive to us. That it has us so mesmerized, that this world has us so mesmerized. The, the values of this world, that the things of eternity has no value. Amen. And so we have to understand this. He makes it attractive. Look what it says here in the scriptures. Look at the method he used and, and, and look at it. He says here, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. And let me say this right now. We're in the last days right now. These are the latter days, all right? People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, having a lot of church, having a lot of religion, but denying its power. And look what he says, have nothing to do with such people. So we see here, one of the wiles uh, is to make the values of this godless society seem attractive. What do I mean by that? We just talked, I preached a couple weeks ago, homosexuality, he makes that attractive. That that's an attractive thing, but that's an abomination to God, amen? Casual sex. Amen. It makes it attractive, man. It's fine. Amen. You, you got to, you, you know, you, you, you young, you, you, you got to experience life. But that's an attraction of this world that goes contradictory to the will of God. Amen. These are just some of the things. Amen. Uh, uh, the drunkenness is attractive. I don't know the last time. I've never seen an attractive alcoholic. Amen. There's no attractiveness to that. But what the world, what the enemy will try to do is make this world look attractive and the things and the values of this world look more attractive than what God says. Amen? What God has commanded us 
to operate and to do. Amen. And so he, he uses this, the priority of self, pleasure, amen, sensualism, amen, um, possessions, amen, got to be bigger, got to be, got to be better, amen. And, and the attempt, watch this, the attempt, watch the attempt, the attempt is to make us worldly, a worldly church, worldly believers. That's the whole attempt is to make us worldly because we're into what the, the values of this world, amen. And so I'm just sharing with you some of the wiles that you got to make sure you and I don't fall prey to them because it's a method, it's a scheme to lure us in to make us what? To make us ineffective, amen? To make us no longer salt, amen? But then there's a third one. There's a third wile. And the third wile that he uses, it is to get, uh, to get saints' attention, watch this, this is key, on the present rather than eternity. We got a lot of folks looking at right now. I ain't talking about the world. The world's the world. I'm talking about born again believers. We're more concerned about right now in the present that we're not even thinking about eternity. We're more concerned about right now. Our, our main focus right now is the present and we're not even, we don't have no concern about eternity. And that's a wow. That's a, that's a method of the enemy. That's him getting our minds off of things that are going to last forever. Eternity is forever. This world, this time that we have here is not forever, amen? But eternity is forever, amen? And so the one of the wiles is to get us to focus on the right now more so than our future. You got to walk with me. You got to understand that. Look what the scripture says. In 2 Corinthians, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 9, and 10, so we make it our goal. Will we make it our goal? To please him. That's it. We make it our goal to please him now, getting us ready for our eternity. Amen? Whether we're at home in the body or away from it, for we must all appear, listen to the truth, watch this, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to leave one way or the other. You're going to leave this earth, amen? Are you going to leave by way of a physical death or are you going to leave by way of the rapture? But you're going to leave this earth. You're going to leave here. That's a guarantee, amen? And then eternity is going to be ushered in, amen? And so watch this. So that each one of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. What am I saying? The enemy's attempt for the believer is to get us focused on right now getting everything for right now and we're not investing nothing for eternity. Our focus is not on when we leave this earth. And it should be. Our focus should be when we leave this earth because we have to stand and give an account for the things that we've done in this body. Not for sin, but for all the, the stewardship and everything, the giftedness and all that he's given us, we will stand and give an account. And so we must understand that one of the wiles of the enemy is to get us focused so much on now that we don't look for tomorrow. And I stop by to let you know that tomorrow's coming. Our salvation is nearer today than what it was yesterday. You better wake up, believer. Amen. And you say, well, that's a fatalistic, uh, you, you know, uh, talking about, no, no, that's life. Uh, to live is Christ, to die is gain. That's life. Real living, in order for you to live, you got to first die. That's what real living is. Amen. And so we have to understand that. And so the wow is to get us to get short-sighted that we're only looking at right now. Amen. We're looking at a pandemic right now. Watch this. We're in it. But watch this. But eternity is even greater than what we're experiencing right now. Eternity is greater than what we're experiencing right now. And we still got to be looking towards eternity. Amen. We still got to be looking towards our true future with Jesus Christ because we're going to see him just as he is. When? When, Pastor? Any moment now. Any moment now. Watch this. So we see that third wow. Watch the fourth one. Here we go. The fourth one is this, a wild that he uses, amen, is to get saints' attention. Oh, I'm sorry, I just said that, not to get saints' attention on the present. But a wild that he uses is to confuse believers, excuse me, to confuse believers, and this is a good one, with false doctrine. He's trying to get us caught up with false doctrine, amen. And, and the reason why so many Christians uh, do not understand the Bible, because they don't read the Bible, Amen. They'll wait for the pastor to, to, to preach a sermon 
or, or something like that, but they don't read the Bible for themselves, amen? Uh, and, and Satan knows this. Satan knows that, that they don't spend time in the word of God, amen? And so the false preachers, he'll send false preachers and teachers uh, our way, and, and they'll present uh, so many different interpretations of what the word of God is saying, and, and, and so many different variances of, of the word of God, and, and we get so confused, and believers will start running to, and being tossed to and fro, but every wind of doctrine because many false teachers the enemy send many false teachers that look just like um, genuine preachers and teachers of the gospel and it confuses the people because the people are not in the word of God for themselves and so this is a wow amen this is a wow amen and it leaves the people baffled amen one of the wow statements and I've heard it over the years I've been I've been pastoring for a while now and ministering for a while many of the wild statements that the enemy use he'll use stuff like this he'll use a wild statement like this you know there are many interpretations that's that's a wild statement that's a that's a scheme that's a method that there are many interpretations that I've heard people say, I've heard Christians say, but you know what, Pastor, there's many interpretations. No, it's not. There's not many interpretations. There's only one interpretation. Many different applications, but there's only one interpretation. The Bible, only the word of God, when you read it, it only gives us one interpretation. There's not many interpretations, and, and that's a while from the devil. And for folks to go around and say there's many interpretations, and, and you believe what you believe, and I believe, no, no, there's only one interpretation. There's only one interpretation, and we have to understand that. And that's just the wow of the devil, amen? And many people fall prey to that, amen? And, and we have to understand that that's a wow. That's a wow. And so as we look at that, look at what it says here in 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, it says this. I'm sorry, Ephesians 4.14, it says, Then we will no longer be infants. Watch the word of God, class. Tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there by every wind of teaching, by the cunning and craftiness of people. Amen. All kinds of foolishness out here. Amen. We got, we got, we got so-called preachers calling Jesus black. Jesus wasn't no black. He wasn't black. He, he was a Jew. But we got folks that'll say amen to that stuff and run around the church because they'll fall prey to every wind of doctrine, every, every wind, amen, of teaching. Amen craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming and so the enemy will throw wiles of many different interpretations and many things that are false why because we won't get it don't you know that the holy spirit lives in you don't you know the holy spirit will give you discernment don't you know the holy spirit will illuminate you don't you know the holy spirit is the only one that can can make you understand what the scripture says my job as a, a pastor teacher is to teach you the word to preach the word but i can't make you understand the word that's the holy Spirit's job but if you would rely and trust in Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit he would open up your mind I don't care if you only got a third grade education God will open up your mind to understand what is true and what is false so that's a wow that's a wow of the enemy and then fifthly amen a wow that he uses I'm giving you some wows here amen because we're going to talk about putting in the armor next week but you got to understand the strategy amen and you got to ask yourself the question have you gotten caught up in one of these strategies Maybe you've gotten caught up in the system of this world. Or maybe you got caught up in false doctrine. Amen? Watch this. A while is used is to cause division in the body of Christ. One of the tricks that the enemy will do, a scheme of Satan, is to get folks against folks in the church. Fighting it. We, watch this. We start, we, 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 we um, talk bad about other churches. We talk bad about um, other genuine, I'm talking about genuine men of God that preach the word. We'll talk bad about each other, and that's a trick of the enemy. We get mad at each other. We cause confusion in the body of believers. That's a trick. It's to cause division within the body of Christ. Amen? And that's a scheme. That's a, that's a wow. Amen? Because what the enemy wants to do is produce carnal acting, a, a carnal church where, where the members act fleshly instead of spiritual. And that's always the attack. Amen. Anytime church members are fighting each other and, and, and the world hears about it and, and we're at war with each other, we're at war with other ch um, churches. Jesus says this, he says that they're not against us, they're for us. And we're now dividing ourselves. Who's the best preacher? Who's the best church? That's worldly. That's carnal. Amen. But that's a wow of the devil. That's a wow of the devil. Look what he says here. 1 Corinthians 1, um, chapter 3, verses 1 and 4. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly. He said, I got to address you as, as babies, as immature folks, 
infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you're still not ready. You're still worldly. You're still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, he ain't talking about the world. He's talking about within the church. Amen. We're talking about within the church. That's a while. Amen. Are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Paul, are you not mere humans? So watch this. A while of the devil is to cause confusion within the body of believers. Did you see that? You see that? That's a while. That's a while of the devil. And we got we to gotta safeguard this because church can grow. Church can be effective if church members are fighting each other, if there's jealousy over other churches. Amen. You, you celebrate another church that may have a concept that's impacting the kingdom of God. Matter of fact, you go on board with them because God will give your church a concept. And the other churches come on board. There's nobody that has, that has a corner market on ministry. There's nobody that has the idea, premier idea on ministry. God uses different local assemblies to do certain things and but we're one church and we're one body and so the while of the devil is to get us to be divided and then and then the last one the last while I hope you're getting these wiles today amen because guess what these wiles work against all of us it works against me it works against you don't think that you're above because guess what by you think you're above it you already got caught up in a while when you think that you, none of these wiles have affected you or you better than this or you more spiritual than this, guess what? The wild has already got you. It's already got you. It's called the pride of life. It already got you. Amen? And so watch this. The last wild is a wild used. Um, that en the enemy's been using this because he's the ancient serpent. That means he knows man. He knows when he knows man, he don't, knows what's, he don't know what's in your heart. But he knows the behavior of man. He knows what man will do if, if he's put up against circum circumstances, if his back is against the wall, whatever it may be, if he gets sick in his body because he's been watching man, he's been knowing how man operates. That's why we call him the ancient serpent. And so one thing that he will do a while that he uses is to get us to stop believing God. He will allow it. Look. We get touched by infirmity, sickness, cancer, whatever, uh, coronavirus, whatever. We get, we get touched by anything. He wants us to stop believing God. We have some trouble in our families. We got trouble in our finances, trouble in our job, whatever. He wants us to stop. He wants us to start doubting God. Amen. He wants us to stop believing that God is the Lord Almighty. Amen. And he wants us to start to doubt him. Once you and I start to doubt God, we fall prey to the scheme and the wiles and the method of the devil. He wants us to doubt his promises. He wants us to doubt his power. He wants us to doubt that God can solve our problems. He wants us to doubt that, that God's grace and mercy will cover us. He wants us to doubt the fact that God loves you no matter what you do or what you say or what you experience, that the love of God can never separate from you and I no matter what. He wants us to doubt the fact that God is good. Let's look at it. He did it from the very beginning. He did it with the woman. He did it with Eve in the garden. Amen. And look what it says here, with the woman in the garden, amen? Before her name was Eve, she's the woman in the garden, but we know it's Eve, watch this. Now the serpent in Genesis 3, 1 and 4, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say? That's the doubt. Did God really say? Isn't that how the enemy speak to you? You think you're speaking to yourself. Enemy speaking in your ear. He's speaking to you. Amen. Did God really say, look what he says. Did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Isn't that, God, watch this. The enemy will use somebody to come beside you. It could be a friend. It could be somebody in your family and say, did God really mean that? Does God really mean what he really says in his word? The cause doubt. Amen. The woman said to, to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die. Listen to that. The serpent said to the woman, what is he doing? He's creating doubt. And that's a while. That's a while. Anytime you and I start to doubt God in any facet of our lives, that means we're falling prey to a scheme. We're falling prey to a trick. And the wiles and the schemes of the devil are crafty. Let me close with this point, this point. Our enemy is the devil. He is so crafty. He is so, he can manipulate. He will use people to manipulate. 
He will use anything that he can use. Amen. Anybody, watch this. Christians, he will oppress and he will use them. Amen. If they don't want to fall under the power of God. Amen. And we already know he used all unbelievers because they already fall under his power. But he is so crafty. Let me close with this and then we'll look at the solution and we'll get ready for next week. In the Gospels, let me show you how crafty the enemy is and how, how powerful he is. But great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Let me close with this. And let's look at how crafty he is. Look what it says in Matthew. I'm going to read it to you. Jesus told them another parable. Listen to this. This is how crafty he is. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, watch this, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. Listen, listen how the enemy God sowed good seed. The enemy came when everybody was asleep. Listen to this. They were asleep and he sowed in some bad seed, some, some weeds, right? Among the wheat and he went away. And when the wheat sprouted and formed heads and the weeds also appeared, the owner's servant came to him and said, sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this. Watch the word that Jesus is preaching here. He replied, the servant asked, do you want me to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because you, while you're pulling the weeds, you will uproot the wheat with them because they're entangled now. And, and they had relationships and all kinds of stuff. They're all together now. No, no, leave it alone. Watch this, leave it alone. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time, I'll tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds, then tie them in bundles to be burnt, then gather the wheat, the wheat and bring them into the barn. What is my whole point as I close? The enemy is so crafty in his schemes that he knows how to, how to sow in counterfeit amongst the true believers. He knows how to bring unbelievers and sow them amongst the believers to do what? It won't stop the plan of God, but it can hinder the plan of God. That's how crafty he is. That's how crafty he is. That's why the believer got to be able to stand in truth. That's why we got to be able to pray. That's why we got to be able to walk in the spirit. The solution. All the pieces. This is how we fight the good fight. You say, how do we fight this? How do we, how do we put this together? I want you to listen, saints. The only way that we can successfully stand up against the wilds. Amen. You don't stomp no devil's head. Get away from that foolishness. Amen. You don't stomp his head. Amen. That's foolish. It doesn't even Bible. Amen. But the only way we can effectively stand up against the wiles of the devil, the only way, brothers and sisters, to be victorious against the schemes and the methods we must have in place all the pieces, not some of the pieces. We must have in place all of the pieces and they must be intact. They must be fitted properly. That's the key word. They got to be put on right. You got to darn it on right. Amen. We got to put the armor on properly, the armor of God. That's how we fight against the schemes and the methods and the wiles of the devil. Amen. We learned a lot today. Amen. And you need to go back. I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, have I been falling prey to any of the wiles? Amen. Maybe, maybe it's the lust of the eyes. Maybe it's the pride of life. Amen. Maybe, maybe it's the system. Amen. Maybe it's the lust of the flesh. Amen. Maybe it's false teaching, whatever it may be. Maybe it's, it's not looking at eternity and being more so looking at this present world. Or maybe putting a value more on this world than the things of God. Whatever, whatever it is, it's a wow. And you got to ask yourself, have I been falling prey to the wiles, to the schemes of the devil. And if you have, watch this. This is the solution. We're going to put the arm on. You're going to repent. And we're going to walk and we're going to fight the good fight. May God bless you. Amen. I want to see you again next Wednesday. We're going to grow in this thing. Don't let the devil, wow, don't let the devil keep you away from your Wednesday night class. You get into your Wednesday night class. Amen. So you can grow up in the things of the Lord. Amen. So you can be strong and that you can represent Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Maybe one here today that stands in need of salvation. Today is the day. You give your life to Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. Be Lord of my life. I surrender my life to you. And then and if you ask the Lord to save you, ask for forgiveness of your sin. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I know that you sent Jesus into this world to die my death and to give me eternal life. And I accept the free gift. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. And if you've said that, today you have, 
jumped from one family, been taken out of one family, and placed into the family of God. Amen. And I want you to tell somebody about that. If you have any questions, go on our, uh, on our website or um, 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 any questions about today's lesson, any, anything, feel free to contact me. Go on our um, email, right? Any questions you may have about this teaching or any other teaching on the email. And we can discuss it. We'll, we'll get right back to you uh, promptly and we can discuss it. Let's grow up in the things of the Lord rooted. Let's stay focused. We got a work to do. May God bless you. Stay safe. Amen. Don't fall prey to the scheme of the devil. And I know it's getting warm, but we know we're still in the pandemic. Stay focused. Stay safe. And keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Good night.